Hey guys, my name's Jenna and today I'm going to show you around my craft room. Now this craft room has been a work in progress for a really long time. It's taken me probably about 14 years to finally get to this point. Um, some of the things you're going to see around this room are really, really old supplies. Uh, some of my markers date back to college, which was about 16 years ago. So keep that in mind when you're seeing the things around this room. I rearrange all the time. I think I'm finally in a place where I'm pretty happy with it. So I wanted to share some of my solutions with you. Um, just so you know, we live in about a thousand square foot condo. This is the second bedroom. Um, so I have tried to maximize storage as much as possible. So with that in mind, let's take a look. All right guys, so let's take a look inside. So in general, this is the room. I have my workstation set up over here with all of my everyday sort of supplies, markers, paint pens, paint is in those drawers. We'll explore a little bit more of that later. Uh, and this is made out of Ikea kitchen cabinets and countertop. And then we have kind of the textile side. So I've tried to divide this room into zones. So we have textiles and kind of general supplies and art journaling things. Um, and there are even more things behind this door. This is where I keep all my gel plates. So that is kind of the general overview of things. I'm trying to just kind of get as far back as I can. Um, you know, I use as much vertical storage as possible. Um, you can see every inch is accounted for, basically. Um, that's, you know, you run out of space, so you go up. I have taken the doors off the closets in this room uh, because I found that with the doors here, I was just shoving things behind them and, you know, never using it. So that is what we have there. Oh, and you can see again, even going up here. So let's take a closer look at some of these solutions. All right, so I wanna talk in detail about some of these solutions. Um, I won't go over everything today because <laughs> there's a lot, there's a lot guys. Um, but one of the main things in this room is this desk unit. So this is made from Ikea's section kitchen cabinets. Um, I have the Hagaby doors on it in case you're wondering what door style this is. Um, and it is five different cabinets. This is a shallow cabinet that I've turned on its side and um, it is acting as a bookshelf. So this has a lot of my scrapbook papers and my die cuts. This is using inside these little plastic things here. That is from We Are Memory Keepers. That is their scrapbook paper storage. And then if you spin around here, I have two 24 inch six drawer cabinets. These hold all of my paints and um, mediums, ink pads, things like that. I will show you guys that in a second. And then I have just an open cabinet back here. Let's move this out of the way. And this is holding um, suitcases. Now, these the reason these suitcases are here is because when I would do in-person um, craft fairs, this is part of my setup. So that is those. And that is one of our dogs, Koji. 
Um, he has lost a ball back there. <laughs> so, and then we have a bit of space and I'll talk about that in a second, but this is probably the most used cabinet. This is a 15 inch base cabinet and this has my trash can. Um, super important for me because it's right here, right by my workstation. All right, so let's talk about this empty space that you guys see in between. Um, this is where some of my carts are and I have a few carts in this craft room. This is the Ikea Rascog cart. And this holds all of my spray inks. So there are all of the sprays. So there are all the sprays in this cart. And then this is the We Are Memory Keepers project cart. I love this cart. Uh, just uh, for your information, it was kind of a pain to put together. Um, there were a lot of extra screws for whatever reason, but I love being able to separate all the different things I'm working on on this cart. So in the bottom, you can see there are collage pieces and then some art journals in progress. Then I have my sewing stuff that I'm working on and then some pigments that I've been mixing. So those are what lives in this space along with a hamper that is storing all of my scraps of fabric. Uh, this is the solution I've come up with. I don't wanna fold them. Um, so I just toss my scraps in there for future projects. Okay, let's talk about these drawers a bit. I love these cabinets. So this holds all my paints. Again, like I said, I try and keep everything in sort of zones. So I've organized my paints by warm tones and cool tones. This is all the warm tones in matte finished paint. And then this is sort of your regular acrylic um, and inks in warm. And then we have the same thing in cool. So this is the matte finish. And this is the regular acrylics and the start of some mediums. And then we have the sort of neutral tones going on. Uh, and then down here are all my mediums. For this cabinet, I have collage papers in here, as well as the second drawer of collage papers. And then ink. So all my ink pads are in here. These are um, storage from scrapbook.com and I have them laying in this drawer. Um, they don't fit, it's not a perfect fit because the bottom of these drawers is slightly bowed um, or so, not bowed, sorry, slightly curved. Um, and these are not, but they fit in really well. And then more ink pads. And then down here is glitters and embossing powder. And in the very bottom, it's a little miscellaneous. Um, I have some, um, brush uh, watercolor, sort of powdered watercolor, some resin, um, a few stickles, so just some miscellaneous sort of things um, that there's only enough, to, there's not enough to have a whole drawer, but I can group them together. And all those drawers are soft clothes, which I love. As we move up on my desk, I have all of these Ikea SCOTUS pegboards, and that is what holds the majority of the supplies. I find when they're out and I can see them, I use them more. So this again is sort of cutting 
section. So I have my paper trimmers, I have my um, craft mat. Um, there are actually two stacked here for when this one gives out. And then this is all pencils, markers, ink, in these little cups and then I keep my watercolors tucked underneath at the very bottom. So various pencils, ink tents, uh, pastel pencils, watercolor pencils, scissors. These are empty for future uh, supplies, which you know will happen eventually. <laughs> Because I reorganized recently, I have given myself a little more room to grow again. Um, I'm always collecting and trying new supplies, so I want to make sure that this is efficient for me. Um, that means I, I've recently redone this section, um, and if you guys happen to go by my Instagram, you'll see the older setup of this. This works really well for me now. So what I have here are the oil pastels. Um, I put my matte medium within arm's reach because I'm always using that. There is some random brushes, distilled water. Those are my sponges um, on these little shelves that I found at Target um, in that, you know, dollar section there. Um, the cups are actually egg cups to hold all those sponges. And then I use the dryer a lot. I use the spray bottle. So these are the things that I use all the time. As you can tell, they are right in front of me at arm's reach. Uh, the thing you'll see hanging up is a sky float so I can film or take pictures. Um, and then more cups for crayons, um, distress markers, all that sort of stuff. I have a gel plate within arm's reach as well as my paper towels. And then these are my chalk um, or soft pastels. And then this is one of those containers from scrapbook.com that I had in the drawer. I just drilled some holes through the acrylic on the back. And then these are all my gel plates. The little ones that are, you know, slightly odd sizes. Um, and the ink pads that I use the most often. So they are, again, within arm's reach. Um, this, I wouldn't, I don't recommend doing this if you're going to put anything heavy in this, but these are really light. So that's why I'm okay with mounting it, um, the way it is. Cause it wasn't designed to do that. We'll see, you know, how it holds up over time. I think again, with how lightweight that stuff is, it will be fine. All right. As we move up the wall, I told you guys I try and use every inch possible here. Um, these are some IKEA wall shelves. I have a lot of IKEA. I used to work at IKEA, so that has been my go-to um, for a lot of these storage solutions, and it works well for me. Um, but I have the wall shelves, and these are um, marker storage from. These are marker storage from, I believe, Crafter's Companion, um, and that is holding all of my markers, my Prismacolors, the Tombow, um, Posca, it's, it's all there. Like I said earlier, guys, these supplies did not just magically appear overnight. Some of these markers, specifically some of these Prismacolors, are from 2005. Um, so I, I don't use them enough to where they are not working anymore and they last a really long time. Um, here I have a storage unit from Jane Davenport and her pastels are on it. These are some binders with stencils in it and then some miscellaneous things there. The bins up here are from Target, and those are holding um, blank art journals for future use. And this shelf is holding all stamps and stencils. So I like to keep my stamps in these mini binders. 
I use pages from Crafters Companion if they are the clear back. Um, a lot of these come on their own backing and I've punched holes in it or like the Tim Holtz, um, they have holes punched in it. Um, let me see. Let me get one down to show you. So here is the binder and this already has holes punched in it. So that is kind of how I keep my stamps. I have tried to label the sides. These are labels from Avery. And what I like about them is that you can write on them with a Sharpie, um, but they're also erasable. So I reorganize a lot. I started off by making, these are some of my older labels on the label maker. Um, I rearrange too much for that. <laughs> I really do. So um, something I can relabel, reorganize, that's perfect for me. Good bow. All right, and at the very top of this wall is a lot of miscellaneous or extra things. Um, I have some old greeting cards up there in that box, washi tape. Um, there's a lot of back stock. So things that I knew were discontinued that I love, that I wanted extra of. Um, I have some boxes of that. Those are boxes of ephemera. So for specific travel, um, when we went to Sweden or Baltimore, I have boxes for future travel journals or future scrapbook projects up there. And then extra pastels, um, some pencil cases. <laughs> I have a lot of pencil cases and I can't bring myself to get rid of them. So those are up there as well. Um, some crochet thread is up there, spray paint, all of that sort of stuff is what lives at the very, very top. So it's the things that I don't need to access often. Um, I'm short, so <laughs> I do have a step stool that lives in this room and it acts as my chair as well. Um, but this, this really is like once or twice a year type thing, not getting down all the time. Shape. Again, guys, my goal is to use as much of this space as possible, as efficiently as possible. So behind the door, I have all my gel plates. These are all either on screws um, or on tacks, and that's how I store them for the most part. Um, the bigger ones are all back here, and they're flat, you know, it doesn't take up a lot of space. I can see which size or which pattern I want, and so that's easy access. Um, I have this shoe storage cabinet that this is holding some scraps of fabric. This also holds some of my paper scraps or um, extra pads of paper. And then I have this organizer from the container store for things like buttons and beads and elastic, eyelets, that sort of stuff. And then at the very top up here is vintage books, old books that I like the look of that I have plans of one day, maybe one day, turning into art journals. We'll see how long that one day takes. All right, so we are making our way around the room. Um, over here are these two closets. Like I said earlier, I took the doors off of these because I was just shoving things inside and closing the door. Um, if I couldn't see it, I didn't need to organize it. I didn't need to get it, all of that. Um, so I took the doors off and put up the storage shelves that are adjustable. Again, for me, adjustability, I rearrange often, so I need it to be flexible. Um, you'll see the two different sides. So one is more paper crafting and the other side is more textile related and fabric, keeping things in the zones again. At the top of this wall, these are all storage, um, vinyl storage 
foil storage holders from Heidi Swap and We Are Memory Keepers. Um, a lot of my vinyl that is up there, I have re-rolled. I've taken out the cardboard center and just rolled it into a tighter roll to fit up there. And these are grouped by category. So foil, um, iron-on vinyl, um, permanent vinyl, all of that is what's up there. And then in the middle of the two closets, I have this craft cart from Michael's. And it is holding my Cricut the die cut machine, um, which is the Sizzix Big Shot, my printer, and then I have some wall shelves above that. Those brackets are from Amazon, and the shelves are actually just pieces of cut wood from Home Depot. Um, and that is holding the Little Cricut and my um, book binder. These binders are holding things like ephemera and tags um, again, you can see I have those labels on them. These are Jane Davenport binders that have been discontinued. I got a whole bunch <laughs> when they went on clearance. Um, and I love them. They're pretty to look at. Um, and I just put the label over the elastic on the side. And then at the top, those boxes, those three boxes are actually empty, waiting for future things to go in them. <laughs> or possibly more journals on that shelf. Um, so I have some small Dina Wakely journals, um, the Diane Reevely Dilusions journal, and the Jane Davenport journals up there in their little home. Guys, okay, so let's take a closer look at these closets. Um, like I said, these shelves are adjustable. You can see the brackets back there. At the bottom of this one, I keep my canvas and artboards. The middle has some collage papers, magazines, um, those boxes of plastic gloves, and then some more of the paper holders from We Are Memory Keepers. And this one um, to the left is a paper holder from Ikea. And more paper, more future journals, maybe one day. Um, I'll get around to that. So that, again, is kind of the paper side of things. This closet is the more textile side of things. So this one actually does go higher up. This, the very top of this is stuff like I almost never get to. Um, some extra composition books that I don't know why I have them, but I have them. Um, <laughs> And then it's the start of the fabric. So just fabric, fat quarters, um, elastic. Then there's a few miscellaneous things on these lower shelves. Some more vinyl, um, alcohol ink, and my just hordes of fabric. <laughs> I was supposed to make my fabric stash smaller this year. It has gotten bigger. Um, and then two drawer units, again, from Ikea that hold things like miscellaneous paintbrushes, fountain pen ink, pigments that I had extra pigments of after I made watercolors. So like the extra will go in this drawer for future use. So that is this closet. And now we will take a look at this side. So over here, I have some jars of washi tape. Um, the cuddle bug, which I, I don't know, I can't get plates for anymore, which is why I got the big shot. It just hasn't found, figured out what to do with it. I hate getting rid of it. I feel like it's useful. I don't know, guys. Um, I have my button press and then the jars of the various buttons. Because I rearranged recently um, with the pegboard, these boxes are all empty and waiting for solutions. Um, and then these are called Mopey boxes from Ikea. Um, I've taken three of them, six of them, <laughs> and mounted them all to the wall. Um, the drawers, you get a set of each of these drawers. So one box comes with 
three small drawers, two medium drawers, and two lar and one large drawer, sorry. Um, and I've rearranged all of those so that it's small, medium, and then large. Um, and stacked them and, like I said, mounted them to the wall. Um, wall anchors are involved, all of that. Again, nothing crazy heavy is in here. Um, I do have my mink sitting on top as well as my speaker for this room. Um, I won't open these top ones because they are actually empty now that I've moved the pastels to the wall. But to give you an idea, like these are some of the big dies. And then I have random texture things for the gel plate, some embossing folders in here. So I love this. Again, flexible storage um, is the key for me. Um, and then as we make our way around the room, <laughs> this is my sewing area. So my Ikea Raskog trolley um, is holding my iron. It's holding the Cricut Easy Press along with um, pattern weights and elastic, zippers, all that sort of stuff. This sewing machine um, is actually, used to be my grandma's, so it is a Singer 401A, in case you are wondering. I love it, it's been working great for me. Um, my sewing machine died this year, and since I had this one, I thought I might as well put it to use. Um, and it's, it's, going. It <laughs> haven't had an issue. Um, below that, you will see the bed for the dogs because they like to lay right under my feet while I sew, um, which makes it kind of awkward to sew sometimes, but you know, you work with what you got. <laughs> um, and then next to it is my serger um, and then the yarn. So this is, again, Ikea Fabricor. Um, and that is holding all my yarn and some thread above it. So this is three cake stands that I've stacked to hold some of my thread. Um, and then on the back wall are all my crochet hooks. So these crochet hooks are, the storage is um, an empty picture frame and all I did was crochet a square and stapled it to the back of the frame. So that is how those are being stored. Um, on this shelf is a container of ribbon, and then that is my grandpa's old toolbox. There is nothing currently in it as far as craft supplies go. Um, eventually, probably, at one point there were things, but I've taken them out. Um, but it makes me happy being in here because those thimbles that you see across belong to my grandma. So those are kind of together in this room. Um, I am continuing to add to that collection as we go on vacations. So, you know, it's, it's sentimental to me guys. Um, yeah, <laughs> I'll leave it at that. Um, and then over here in the corner on these picture ledges are some journals that were in progress. Some are handmade, some are bought. And then I have this um, discontinued piece from Ikea. I say it's discontinued because somebody asked about it the other day, but it's kind of, you could probably DIY something like this if you were interested. It's a square frame with these elastic bungees through it and that is holding more um, journals, my decal trimmer, and some again miscellaneous journals. Above that is a shelf with extra pencils and then I have my tablet mounted over here so I can watch YouTube videos or tutorials or whatever at the same time that I'm crafting. Um, oh, and then my cutting table is tucked away in the corner along with another little cart. And that is everything.
tutorial. All right, thank you guys for joining me on this craft room tour. I hope you enjoyed it. If there's anything that you guys want to see closer of or more detail of, let me know. Put it in the comments and I will try and do more videos. Um, if you are on Instagram, I am over there as at Jenna underscore Riggins. Um, and you can find close up pictures of this room on my feed there. So have a great day and hopefully I will talk to you guys again soon. Bye.